We're going to move on to our next session. Uh, it's a fireside chat on the topic of Web3, a developer's guide to the decentralized web. And to talk about that, can I call on stage Jeremy Michaud, a CEO and G at GM Contactless, and Vatan Vindal, CEO and founder at Shura Technologies Limited. Um, a round of applause for the gentleman, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, everyone. Uh, so Jeremy, let's start with a small introduction. Okay, sure. So. Well, I think we will start by introducing a bit our, about ourselves, and then we will uh, we will talk about this uh, this subject, Web three, a developer's guide to the decentralized web. So I'm Jeremy Michaud, I'm the founder of JM Contactless, which is uh, like a, a cashless payment system for events. So in my everyday life, I mean, I started as an engineer in a computer, and uh, now I'm more like a yeah, business and in engineering. So I, I started a company like five years ago and uh, it was, at the beginning, it was just like an engineering project, side project uh, that I do on my side time and uh, it had a great success. So right now uh, we have a full company, a team of 10 people, which is amazing, very great experience. And uh, I really love, uh, love all of that. And I thank them if they are watching me because that's a very great experience. And what about you? Thank you, Jeremy. My name is Vatan Vindal, and uh, I represent Shura Technologies. Uh, we are an IoT-based company where we are working with the uh, video telematic solution for you know driver profiling, driver safety. Uh, it's a camera-based system which uh, you know gives alerts like driver drowsiness alerts, smoking alerts, mobile phone usage alerts, you know lane detection, lane departure warning, pedestrian detection warning, forward collision warning. Uh, we do driver authorization, authentication, working our calculation, a lot of video-based stuff around the automotive. Uh, that is what we do at Shura Technologies. So let's start with the topic, uh, Jeremy. So, uh, you know, it's interesting to understand what Web 3.0 means from a software perspective, you know, developer's perspective. Yeah, so I think uh, to talk about Web 3.0, we need to start with Web 1 and Web 2 and what does this mean and what is a big change about Web 3 from a technical aspect and also from a business aspect. So first of all, Web was developed by a Swiss company like the, the CERN to communicate between them. So at basis, we have like Web 1, which is like a static way of, uh, of doing it. You have static web page, we all knew that. It was at the early 2000, I think, something like that. And um, they were just like uh, browsing, you can have information, but that's it. Uh, HT HTML is like hyperlinked text makeup, so it's just web page linked to another, uh, one to another, but there were no really mean of communicating between users. And that's what has been improved in Web 2. So Web 2 is more like uh, you have a profile, you have messaging, you have everything. Web 2 is basically what we know today, what we use every day. So social medias, news websites, account, e-banking, and everything. And it is centralized. So the main information about centralized is that there is a main server, and all the information goes there and goes to the user. So you have always, you go to the server and the server gives you the information. So it's really based on one point, which could be replicated, but that doesn't really change the aspect. And um, right now we are moving to the web three, which is decentralized, meaning there is no single point of failure in a certain way, and also no single point of information, meaning the information in is distributed all over the internet and all users are contributing to this information, which is really interesting and has a lot of uh, interesting application to our, like we all know about Bitcoins and everything, so from financial, but it can have the, a lot of opportunities and I think it is really important as a, a technical and a business aspect to, to really uh, be interesting about it, to not miss this wonderful opportunities to change our way of using internet. So, um, so that's a bit my point about Web 3.0. And um, 
and uh, from your side. So what do you think could be the use case of Web 3.0, especially maybe on IoT fields and in your industry? Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you for this question. You know, uh, Web 3.0, the services we are using, Web 3.0 services in a lot of industries, you know, like education, healthcare, entertainment, you know, uh, financing. So one of the verticals which is, you know, not being catered to by Web 3.0 is, I would say, is IoT. And, you know, IoT uh, devices we see everywhere in our life, you know, starting from our homes, offices, vehicles we move around, everywhere we see IoT devices. And that is one particular field which is yet untouched, I would say, by the Web 3.0 right now. And, uh, you know, if you're looking at today's world, you know, the biggest issue at hand in the IoT field is, you know, get devices getting hacked, privacy issues in terms of the data that is flowing through our homes, you know, Alexa, CD, they are all on Web 3.0 but then there will always be privacy issues in the IoT space. So I think uh, what me and my team and you know, everybody in the IoT space is working on is you know, making it decentralized, how we keep these IoT devices away from the big giants you know, and make it decentralized. So that is what our focus is. You know, uh, we are into video telematics. So having a video data of a plant flowing through a Web 2.0 is basically a big challenge for us, you know, keeping these issues private or, you know, is a challenge for us. So I would really be interested in, new, you know, understanding how Web 3.0 can play a very crucial role in, you know, uh, develop the IoT space the way it looks today. And IoT space today is, you know, I, I think a trillion dollar industry in 2022 uh, with 15 million IoT devices, you know, moving around the world. So I think IoT is one space which is yet untouched, but I would love to understand more of Web 3.0 in the financing sector that you are in right now. Yeah, so from my field, again, I'm in cashless payment system. My, uh, my company is very specific to events. So there, are, there is basically RFID tags into wristband. You load money with it and you can pay it. And right now it is in centralized server. So I have to have on-premise servers that that register all the transactions. But I think Web3.0 could be very interesting also in this field because you can have decentralized information, every user sharing the database, so there is no single point of failure again, and it could be distributed and anonymous. So that's something really important. And we can also integrate it, like to have a cryptocurrency or something that people can have on different events because that's also a very big issue of this business right now. Every time you go to a new event, you have to create a new account and start from bottom, register and everything. So that's pretty painful, I would say. So if you have a wallet or something really decentralized, you know you have privacy and also you can keep your information. And uh, as you know, may, as you maybe not know, I started my um, my engineering by working into IoT, so I know a little bit also uh, about this issue, and uh, I'm really interested to to discuss about how we can apply um, this information into IoT, because I think privacy, security are really big issues of IoT, and the danger we are facing today is that big companies have all the data, so they can, if they have breaches, they can provide all the data. And also, if they, um, they say they can decide what they want to do with it, and I think Web three can really uh, change that, so the, the users can distribute anonymously the data between them without having to um, to be at the hand of big company. And maybe one question I have: What do you think these big IoT companies will think of Web three Do you think they will? feel like they lose the grip on this data, or do you think that will be open-minded about this? I think uh, so far, you know, IoT devices in general have been, you know, just a data collection points. And, uh, you know, since the last few years, we have been moving into video-based IoT devices. You know, sound-based IoT devices, video-based IoT devices. So currently, it is, you know, uh, much more challenging uh, times for us to make it, you know, more hack-free, more robust, and more private. So I think uh, earlier people were not so concerned or you know, least bothered about their you know, water sensors going hacked. But if a camera in your house is getting hacked, that definitely is a matter of concern. 
So I think Web 3.0 has to play a crucial role in you know getting the IoT devices onto a decentralized platform, and that is where the the teams have started moving in an accelerated way to incorporate Web 3.0 solutions onto IoT services. That is what we are also doing. So uh, very interesting to you know, uh, and the big companies you know who owns the IoT data, you know, billions and billions of messages in the IoT field are transferred every day, every second. So that kind of data flowing suddenly stops to these big giants, definitely will, you know, hit their pockets. So it is, it is really important to understand how will this play out, but you know, it, it's a good time ahead for IoT space, I would say. That's great, thank you for, for the answer. Yeah, I think definitely if we, if we can manage a way to, to have it, uh, to add Web 3.0 into IoT, that will definitely be very interesting. Um, do, do you do you have already some plan to integrate it in your in your field or something there? We are doing some trials, some testing. You know, our own uh, in-house decentralized video servers. We're trying to do that, but uh, I think it's just a start. I would say. Yeah. Yeah, because it's the beginning of Web3, that's so it. Again, again, Jeremy, you know, you are using these RFID tags where you have to have a reader or a mobile app to get it connected to read that tag. So are you also working on the Web 3.0 technology to enable your app works on these technologies or still using the Web 2.0 for reading these uh, RFID tags? So that's very interesting questions. I think that would be a big challenge to, to have a mix between Web 2 and Web 3 because Obviously, you cannot. Uh, Web three is not the revolution that will um, uh, make Web two obsolete. I think they will work together, and be with Web two and Web three, we can have something that is really helpful. So I think uh, right now uh, the um, the plan is simple. You receive a wristband, you load money, and then you pay with it. And what I want to integrate maybe will be you receive a wristband you link it with your Web3 wallet or something like that, and you have all the information about your account, your money and everything, but you stay anonymous because it's really sensitive data. Even if it's just what you drink, what you eat, that gives you information, that could give you information about your company, about where you were on weekend, what you do and everything, that can have a lot of uh, issues, also where you were and everything. So more it's anonymous and private, more people will have trust. And I think that's the same also about IoT, you need to create trust to your customer. The customer need to build, feel confident to have cameras, microphones and everything in his house and being very secure about not knowing that the whole world can listen and see what they are doing. And I think that's really something important about Web3. I don't know what you feel about it, I feel the same way, I feel the same way. And you know, uh, with more and more gadgets uh, moving around the houses, I think we are all concerned about, uh, you know, getting it to a decentralized platform. I would agree with you, Jeremy. I think uh, we can open for questions, if you have something. Yeah, maybe. Um, I think we still have a little bit of, of time, so um, maybe we can also talk about um, what it will change from a um, more technical aspect like uh, uh, sh uh, hosting and things like that. On, I think on we will have to talk issues. about that. And uh, I think to, to start again, I think we need to, to discuss a bit about uh, the DevOps and what it will revolutionize about the way of hosting data because uh, it changed. I mean, back in time, every company had its own server on their site and some backup. Back in time, they, they used to get uh, external drives or everything. Every week, they change it to have a complete backup. So that was really painful. IT guys had to work during night to change everything because people were working uh, on it during days. And now with the, the so many great um, technologies like uh, virtual machines, uh, the speed of internet which has grown completely uh, amazingly faster. Uh, so it changed to cloud hosting, like you, you, you don't need to have a physical server, you have a, a cloud-based server, which is, you can also have like services that pay what you use, so you, you, you don't even have a server, you, you just have a service 
and depending on what you use, you will pay it, you will pay it so, so that makes it very interesting. And I think this cloud now is ready to integrate the Web3.0. And uh, that's really interesting to see that because we can see microservices um, um, and uh, and services and everything that that gives it very uh, very better. And um, I think the future will be uh, in companies who just have basic internet connections, maybe VPN or things like that, and everything will be somewhere, but you don't really know or you don't really need to know. And that's also one really important feature of Web3 is if you know that where you host this data, it can be read by big companies, that could be uh, an annoying. And even uh, because, for example, regulations of Switzerland needs for a company, you need to advise your customer that you will host data outside of Switzerland. So that's also a big issue. But with Web.3, you know it's somewhere. You don't know where, but you know nobody can have access on except people that are allowed. So I think Web.3 Web is also possible with this new way of hosting things and with this interesting, this uh, fascinating new internet connection that we have. I can talk uh, also about 5G, which, which I think will also be very interesting from IoT perspective. Do you see an uh, interesting um, feature of uh, about 5G? And what it changes with with 5G, we are looking at you know a lot of uh, connected cars, connected vehicles, connected devices modules, where you know uh, the devices are talking to themselves and to the server. So 5G definitely will play a very crucial role for us to get all the IoT space interconnected like a mesh. And uh, you know we are looking forward to that uh, innovation. Uh, teams have already started working on it. But with you know AI and ML playing a very crucial role in the IoT space, I think that is one of the key gateways for the Web 3.0 to really contribute to the IoT space a lot more than what it is doing today. So we are using a lot of AI and ML technology, and you know that is that is the gateway for Web 3.0 to you know contribute more to the IoT space. Okay, thank you for this answer. Yeah, and I think chips are also integrating 5G, which make it easier to have a, a battery-powered device that is connected to the 5G network to send data and to receive data. So you can have you can have it everywhere without having to have like um, a mesh uh, Bluetooth. Or in, in this case, in this case, sending and receiving data would not only happen from a device to a server, but would also happen from a device to a device. Let's say your car is going on a road. There's another car in front of you which has an IoT device. So imagine your car your car talking to the other car and you know thinking out the path or thinking out something else maybe what god knows but that is what we're talking about in terms of connected cars technology yeah that, that's fascinating and devices talking to devices could also help you improve your everyday life like if you make yourself coffee the coffee will send information to your car be ready you have to he will leave in about 30 minutes and if uh, it's December in Switzerland, so we have a lot of snow, so the car can start to to warm up a little bit and be easier to drive. So that's, that's definitely very exciting, and I think we are looking at a bright future from this side. That is really true. Imagine you have a medicine dispenser box giving you a medicine for cold, and you know that information getting to, getting to your room temperature AC, and that room is controlled because it just had a cold medicine. So you know, imagine these things talking to each other and making your life more comfortable. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I think right now we can we can go. We are open for questions. Anybody? Hi. Yeah, I have a question to Mr. Vatan. So you mentioned that you are also in the video telematics space. So if I'm not wrong, you are capturing video of the drivers also as well. But don't you think in terms of that, uh, there's some sort of conflict with their privacy of sorts? Well, uh, I would say it is not a privacy breach. You know, uh, the reason being, look at this room you're sitting in right now. You know, you have cameras all around you. Are you worried about your privacy? In the office spaces where you sit, you have cameras over your head. But then you don't worry about your privacy. A truck driver, you know, for a truck, a truck for him is a workstation. If he has a camera, we are only capturing videos, you know, 
not even capturing videos, you're capturing videos of the incidents that is happening while he's driving the vehicle, which is his office working hours. So I won't call it a privacy breach because the camera is not there for monitoring him. The camera is there for aiding him in driving in a better way. So that is what my, you know, uh, teaching has been to the driver. It's not a monitoring device, it's a safety device, which helps you drive better in an efficient way. I hope I answered your question. Anybody else? So was your question? Thank you guys, thank you very much. Thank you.